Hello everyone, today we are taking a look at the Meteor 65 Pro from Beta FPV. Uh, they title this 2022 edition. I think that's supposed to mean the end of 2022 because it's 2023. And what's most unique about this, 35 millimeter props, still just about 65 millimeters motor post or motor post. And those four extra millimeters on our prop give us substantially more performance over our traditional 31 millimeter, 65 millimeter motor post or motor post quads. Whoops. It's got these super handsome new motors. Uh, these new motors are 0802 SE motors. And as I get super zoomed in, you can see that their KV is 19,500. And we've got a C-clip on the top and a C-clip on the bottom. And of course, I think they're handsome because, well, I mean, who doesn't like chrome and blue? Come on. And on those motors, we've got some 35 millimeter tri-bladed props that look to me like they're Jim Fan branded, but it doesn't say that on their spec sheet. Oh, and I should mention those are one millimeter shafts on those motors as well as these props. The camera is the new C03, which this one has much less fisheye or warping effect than the uh, C02. The only one flight controller is Express LRS that they do offer a version in FR Sky and it is UART based. So you can flash Express LRS to any version that you want without having to worry about Express LRS being cooked into the version of Betaflight. Separated, no more problems. The VTX, you can see it's mounted to the canopy there is the M03, and it goes from 25 milliwatts up to 350 milliwatts. And of course, as always with Beta FPV, they've got their BT20 connector on the back here, which is a really good connector and quite popular. Note the flight controller does have some relatively decent uh, solder pads on the top, so if you wanted to take the connectors off and uh, decrease your weight, you can certainly do that. Canopy design does not come with adjustable camera angle. Uh, so you can see there, there's a little holster that screws into the canopy. Uh, canopy's got some holes in here for stuff to make it look like a knight, but that's just adding weight. And when it comes to micros, while it might look sharp on your shelf, it's not for flying. And these are those parts that you can add to the top of the canopy to give it some flare when it's sitting on your shelf. But again, I don't suggest flying with it because when you crash, well, they're going to get lost. And it adds weight and it's going to decrease your flight time. I should mention these other camera holsters in here. Those could be different angles, but I have not put them on and that's kind of a pain in the tuchus to do. So you may find that these two other holsters in here come at different camera angles. I believe they were sending pretty much all this USB chargers with their uh, whoops nowadays, I think, but check your pack package contents to make sure. And of course we need a USB cable to use that charger, so yeah. Also in the box is a tiny screwdriver, a QR code to get some help at the Beta FPV website, and it does ship in this nice little uh, carrying case if you care to use it. Nope, it didn't come with stickers, but it did come with an extra set of props, which I nearly forgot about. It weighs just about 22 and a half grams. I flew it on these Weebleed FPV 300 milliamp BT20 batteries. Beta FPV has their own, but they don't perform as well, nor do they give you as much performance or flight time. Tinywhoop.com also sells batteries very, very similar to this, if not exactly the same batteries. And with that battery, it weighs 30.81 grams. With the Beta FPV battery, it weighs 30.69 grams. So it comes in at a pretty solid more than 66 millimeters. I'm getting a touch more at 66.26. But by comparison, a traditional Tiny Whoop comes in at under 65 millimeters, but that's probably within the margin of error if you're measuring for 65 millimeters. I've got a traditional 65 millimeter frame laid over the top to give you some idea of the differences. Obviously, if I've got my camera lined up well, you should see a difference in the size of the prop protection or hoops because the clear one would only accept 31 millimeter props. The Beta FPV Meteor 65 Pro that will accept 35 millimeter props. But something I have noticed about the Beta FPV frames is they're more flexible. So expect your props to take some damage in the hardest of crashes. By comparison, I find that the traditional uh, B-Whoop 65 or whatever you want to call these current model frames, uh, they're stiffer than these. That could mean motor shaft damage too, especially at one millimeter motor shafts. 
But I didn't have any problems with it. All right, and away we go here in just a moment. Nighttime flight. Unfortunately, I lost the whole series of flights with a bad SD card issue. Uh, the SD card just got to a certain point, and I have been using this particular SD card for several years to where it just wouldn't accept any more recordings. And unfortunately, in my goggles, it would say it was recording, but it wasn't actually recording. So, darn it. I had one particular flight that I thought I might want to include in this review, but I think this flight turned out all right. This is uh, nighttime after everybody's gone to bed. And, uh, yeah, this handles really well. You know, I'm, I'm a fan of 75 millimeter whoops, and I understand that uh, for indoor of all houses, that might not be the most friendly by size because of the speed and performance that you can get from a 75 millimeter whoop. But this is kind of halfway between a traditional 65 millimeter whoop and a 75 millimeter whoop. You know, it's got those 35 millimeter props on it. Uh, the weight isn't as low as, say, the Mo Beetle, which I think I had out up there on camera. So it's carrying a little bit more weight. Most of that, I suspect, is the separate VTX and the canopy probably weighs, uh, I would estimate, maybe a third or a half a gram more than some of our lighter canopies, especially if you go super light and you get a 3D printed that, uh, there's a one particular design out there that I think is much lighter than most of the others, or at least most of the other canopies that we uh, get pre-manufactured. But I think that's one area they could improve. Uh, they do have a three position mounted canopy, which I am generally not for, which can oftentimes result in uh, a jello or vibration in your image. But I did not have any of those issues. But also, unfortunately, in this review, I won't be flying it outside. Uh, let me know how important that is. I would have liked to have flown it outside, but uh, I'll give you a little snippet as of why we had some more snow uh, and cold temperatures. We Just this weekend, we had a warm-up, but unfortunately, we had many family things going on, and there just weren't any daylight hours to fly it outside. Uh, so, unfortunately, this review will not include that. I uh, would like to know from you all how important whoops of this size specifically 65 millimeter uh it is to see an outside flight as well before making a, a purchase decision of course more information is better than less information uh surprisingly enough to me with those we bleed fpv batteries which are good batteries and they're relatively new i have been using them a lot in the last have i had those six months Anyways, they're my go-to batteries. I've also got some Tiny Whoop ones, uh, but the Tiny Whoop ones, I only tested the smaller Tiny Whoop ones on this one, the 270s, which did not yield more flight time. So I went back to the Weebleed FPV batteries that are 300 milliamp. Uh, Tiny Whoop sells those, essentially those same batteries as well. Uh, the gate down there, the cube gate, that is a Weebleed FPV gate. I've talked about that a number of times, but this thing flies really nicely it doesn't quite have the performance that i get out of my beloved 75 millimeter but i think if you like the 65 millimeter format and you're looking for extra performance whether that be flight time or just outward thrust for speed or other maneuvers that you might be wanting to do definitely one to look at because it i i felt that with the tune they had on it it handled really nicely and flying at almost three and a half minutes that is Pretty remarkable in the 65 millimeter format. We typically don't get that. And you can see our battery in the lower left, 3.5 volts, just about. It's kind of bouncing around 3.49, 3.5 volts. So this is something that I do uh, pretty much on all the whoops. I don't always show it, and I'm going to show it in its entirety. This is just kind of a speed run. Uh, I'm kind of. I think I'm down to my last battery or two. And not that this is my standard. Sometimes I still go for regular flights. Uh, but this is my speed run. There's kind of two purposes behind it. One, I find it really fun and challenging, but also I tend to crash more. And at those speeds, those crashes mean direct hits, as you've seen already. I hit a wall, then I hit a piece of furniture, dead on. And it also tests the durability. Uh, whether that's uh, prop damage or motor damage or screws coming loose, what have you, the frame breaking, uh, doing two or three flights like this, uh, just kind of letting it all hang out and having a good time and making mistakes can result in a happy accident. It can also just result in an accident, but I think it's a good test, especially because, you know, these are kind of designed around flying inside and my temperatures are pretty cold still. Winter is still here. We have not gotten to uh, a warmer season just yet. But uh, when it comes to flying these things outside, being plastic flames and frames and my temperatures, they, once they get below like 40, 
maybe even as much as below 45. I think flying these things outside is risky. Uh, you're going to end up with all sorts of damage, especially when it comes to those plastics. I, I oftentimes worry about landing in snow, which, you know, sometimes they'll live through it. Sometimes there won't. There's a big variable when it comes to that moisture. How how cold is it? Is it melting at all? Is it, is it the snow in the shade where it's not melting? Is it in the sun where it is melting? You get a little bit of water on your electronics. Next thing you know, you get dead electronics. Uh, so when it comes to flying whoops, I fly them almost exclusively inside except for reviews. But again, I want to hit that on the head in case anybody skimmed through some of the flight footage. Is it important to see whoops fly outside? I'll probably do it when I can, but is it something I should hold up a review for? Because I might have to hold up a review for a couple of weeks unless I get a, a lucky warm break. Which we had, it's just unfortunate, we had birthdays to celebrate and we've got some other family things going on to where we, we were hosting a lot and it just, outside flight time did, just wasn't there for me. So, that's okay. We had a great time, great celebrations, great family fun, f food, all the cake, cookies, cupcakes, all sorts of stuff to eat. Um, but you can see there, our battery is right at about 3.5 volts per cell when we come into land. We only got 227 in that particular case, but I'm going pretty all out. So even all out, outside, you'll get at least that. <laughs> now you can see the battery is up to 3.61. But I wanted to show you that because I thought it was interesting and maybe something I had failed to mention previously about my durable <laughs> speed runs. So I didn't have any damage, uh, no real damage to report. But one thing I do have to report is that if you start to see these wobbles, like you'll see it up in this picture in picture, to where it looks like the PID tune's off, or it looks like maybe a prop is broken, or the pitch on the prop is off, to where you start to get some of these weird flight anomalies like you're seeing in, in that little flight up there, uh, I found that that is because the screws are coming loose. So if you see that with yours, whether it's this exact one or another one, tighten up those screws. Uh, I had to do that a couple of times because they I found that they were kind of wiggling, wiggling themselves loose. I suspect that is primarily because the holes where the screws go through are bigger than the actual screws themselves. Oftentimes in these whoops, we uh, the, the screw holes will be smaller so that it'll be kind of snug and it'll work as a locking mechanism so the screw won't vibrate loose. It looks like in this regard with at least my frame here, uh, these screws were working themselves loose and as they did, even though when you would grab the, the motor, it would feel pretty solid, I would get those weird flight anomalies and then uh, I could tighten them all up. Uh, actually swapped out motors because I thought I had bent a motor shaft and after I swapped out the motors I still had the issue and I was like okay what is going on that's how I figured out it was the screws getting just a little bit loose not much I don't even know if it was more than a, a full turn on those screws I do find that this frame holds the batteries nicely which I do appreciate because oftentimes in these batteries we have to add a rubber band to go across these little latches here to keep our battery in there because it's just sloppy in there. So uh, that's a nice little point. Oh, I should mention that these uh, frames, you don't have to necessarily just stick with this particular color if you want to build a whoop out. They do have a bunch of different colors. I think there's even more than these on their website. Uh, on the Meteor 65 Pro, so again, these would be specifically for 35 millimeter uh, props. Uh, you could pretty much use any of our Whoop components that you want to. I think that even the boards, for the most part, will fit as long as they're the cross-shaped stuff. But yeah, pretty attractive colors. I actually kind of think this is my preference, of course, unless I could get a dark blue canopy, and then I might go with a white frame and a dark blue canopy. Uh, the green or mint is pretty sharp. And we have our traditional clear, and then we've also got the orange. I think it was either on Facebook or on Discord where I saw somebody had a pretty sharp orange build. Uh, yeah, I do have a Discord. I don't talk about it. It's uh, behind the Patreon thing, which I put the price on Patreon as low as I possibly could. Just, I actually would like to just make it free, but you know, it's the Wild West, so sometimes you know, if you don't have some sort of value in someone maintaining their uh good behavior then they won't do it but so anyways I, I think somebody had mentioned their orange build or they had posted pictures of it and i thought that was super attractive but back to the construction of this so a couple of things that i don't care for uh, and you could vary this this is very subjective it's very opinionated i i'm not a fan of well i 
for weight purposes and overall performance and long flight time, I am not a fan of a separate VTX. Um, that's going to add at least a gram in wiring, the screws that go up into the canopy, as well as the just the VTX itself. It does mean that the VTX is probably a little bit more robust than the VTXs that are built into our all-in-one flight controllers. But it also means that there's potential that if this board comes loose and touches the all-in-one flight controller, we could end up with a short. And that's no good. I do think this canopy weighs more than it has to. I think I've seen people actually cutting out bits out of the canopy to make it weigh even less than it does. Of course, you've got that holster for this camera in here. That's going to add a little bit of weight. So there's a number of different places they could lose some weight if they choose to. But, you know... It is what it is. It's 35 millimeter props, which I think really compensate well for the additional weight. Heck, we just had a much heavier traditional 65 millimeter, 31 millimeter propped whoop on the channel, the BLV4 from Nubidrome, that I believe weighs more than this on those smaller props. So, you know, I might be complaining about weight and things they could do to make it slimmer. They're obviously, it performs very well. I think when it comes to the 65 millimeter format, this would be one of the few ways I would go where I kept it at 65 millimeters rather than moving it up to 75 millimeters. Most of my 65 millimeter whoops, even the ones I've gotten in for review, I tend to take all the components out and put them in a 75 millimeter frame. They just, they fly a lot better in my opinion. They're more stable, more performance from the additional thrust that's uh, produced. Um, you can fly them more aggressively and with a larger battery, so you can fly a lot longer. I just prefer them, but 65 millimeter is uh, one that I hear that's, well, one, I think it's used most standardly in racing, um, official like tiny whoop racing, but I don't know if they have a limit on your prop size, so you definitely want to check, and those that do go out and do those races, can you run 35 millimeter props in your races that you're running in other tiny whoops that are only running 31 millimeter props? Or is there a segment of the races for 35 millimeter props? So does it go by motor post to motor post and the size or does it go by prop size or are you out? I think for most of us that are rec recreational flyers, the size overall is most important. Uh, some people might want a little less... Um, Performance or thrust, because throttle management in inside flight is very challenging. Uh, it's one of those things that, that can try your patience, but it, if you stick with it, it's it's well worth it. I fly every day inside the house. I almost don't miss a day unless I'm terrible sick or gone on vacation. Uh, one other thing that I thought I should mention is that you should probably take a look at this with outside flight and bright sunlight in the camera, because I'm always concerned when we have a three-post or a three screw mount canopy, are we getting any jello or vibrations in our camera? That is something that can happen. Uh, hopefully you noticed during the flight footage this, that this new uh, 03 camera from Beta FPV has less, much less fisheye than the 02 version did, which I, I noticed right away when I had that 02 version of camera that it took me a flight or two to adjust to just how wide and how warped that camera was. This one feels much more flat, but still very, very wide. And if I haven't surprised you yet, or this video hasn't surprised you in any particular way, I've got one thing in my back pocket I'm gonna tell you right now that might surprise you. You can get this for $109. You can actually get any of the Beta FPV analog whoops for $109. Clear up to the 85 millimeter version. Now, that does look to be some sort of promotional price, and that is only from Beta FPV. I see the price on the website is marked in red, but it doesn't say sale or anything like that, so it could be just a promotion that they're running. Hopefully that price at checkout stays at the $109.99, but I was pretty caught off guard by that because we've been seeing a lot of whoops uh, come in at least $10 more than that, and sometimes as much as $30 to $40 more than that. So $109.99... That seems to be a pretty good price for 2023 and where we're at with uh, inflation, the cost of all of our FPV components and everything else that we've got going on in the world today. So uh, you might, if you're interested in a Whoop, whether it's this one or some other one that Beta FPV offers, you might want to uh, go down to that video description and look at their collection, uh, especially if you're interested in the analog side of things, because analog is always going to be the cheapest variety to purchase. If you do have any questions about the Beta FPV Meteor 65 Pro, let me know in the comments section below. I appreciate your time, and thanks for watching.